This is a hymn called The Lord's Sweet Face, the Lord's sweet face of pain and sorrow, whose face full of light, struck by love, wrapped in love, he lost himself for us. The Lord who guides our hearts in love and patience of Christ is with you all. We unite ourselves to the cry of all humanity that waits to be liberated from the pandemic that kills and takes life. In this time of waiting, the meek and humble face of the Lord comes to us, impressed on the shroud that we keep as a precious treasure in our city and in our nation. Let us prepare our hearts for the vision of his face and listen to his word. Let us pray. When darkness invades our path, let your light shine. When doubt darkens our hope, let your light shine. When our struggles slow the path, let your light shine. Let us pray. O Father, who glorifies your Son, Jesus Christ, and his blessed passion, and establish him, Lord, and his resurrection from the dead, grant to us who venerate his image, represented in the Holy Shroud, the grace to contemplate his glorious face. I wish to express to you my warm appreciation of this gesture which responds to the request of God's faithful people, sorely tried by the coronavirus epidemic. I too join in your supplication, turning my gaze to the man of the shroud in whom we recognize the features of the servant of the Lord, that Jesus realized in his passion, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Surely he took our pain and bore our suffering and he was pierced for our transgressions, and he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. In the face of the man of the shroud, we also see the faces of so many sick brothers and sisters, especially those who are most alone and least cared for, and also the victims of war and violence of slavery and persecution. As Christians, the light of the scriptures, we contemplate in this cloth, the Lord Jesus crucified, dead and risen again. To him we entrust ourselves and in whom we confide. Jesus gives us the strength to face every trial with faith, with hope, and with love. And the certainty that the Father always listens to his children who cry to him and saves them. Let us live in these days with intimate union with the passion of Christ to experience the grace and joy of his resurrection. May the Lord grant you all peace and mercy. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks because you have taken the sorrows of every time and every man unto yourself. Your face, your hands, your feet, your side and all of your body are for us a source of hope because love penetrated the extreme darkness of evil and sorrow and gives us the light of faith, gives us the strength of love. Grant us to hear your voice that calls us to bear witness to the world that you have victory over, sin and death. Give us the strength of love, you who live and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we contemplate your face in his sorrowful majesty. His closed eyes speak of tranquil sorrow. Let us stop the suffering, the signs of great suffering, swirling in wounds, blood on your cheeks and in your hair, signs of fractures on your nose and split lips. Remind us of the words of Isaiah. He had no majestic bearing to catch our eye and no beauty to draw us to him. He was spurned and avoided by men. A man of suffering and pain, yet his face does not really communicate sorrow, but love. Your face is shown more expressive of solidarity with every human sorrow, the most authentic mirror. We contemplate your hands, O Lord, those great hands for working that became strong from all the years in Nazareth, 
those delicate and attentive hands, made tender by the love of your mother, those hands that you laid on the eyes of the blind man so that he might regain his sight, your hands that broke the bread and brought the wine during the Last Supper so that your disciples might communicate the gift of your life and now gathered atop your buried body seem to say as is written in the Gospel of John, it is finished. To your disciples they speak of the eternal truth of your love. You did not close your fists to defend yourself, but you kept them open together with your arms for everyone and forever. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle and Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, in your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he had breathed his last. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph. Although he was a member of the Sanhedrin, he did not consent onto their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth, a long sheet of fine linen, and laid him in his own tomb, hewn out of rock, in which no one had yet been buried. This is the word of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, today we contemplate the face and the wounds of the dead Christ, but with hope in our hearts that very soon, in this very evening in our vigil, that the announcement of his victory over death in these difficult and complex times, that many other believers who no longer have eyes to see will recognize the Lord beside them. Our first hope of love and strength to confront all of this with courage, this epidemic which simulates death and so many concerns of the people who have tested positive for coronavirus. The shroud aids us to go beyond all these travails and to see a message of death and life together in the events of Christ and his passion and this opens our hearts and our minds in the most intimate part of us, the faith and hope looking at this sacred shroud. We see the test of the greatest love in this unique cloth, which differentiates itself from so many others which have been made by human hands. Together with the contemplation that accompanies our prayer, there is a particular intensity through this mirror of the Gospels. We can see how much of the Gospel is revealed in the passion and death of Christ. It is a mirror also of ourselves. We who are called to see the shroud, the fullness of our humanity, and to see the love that God has for each of us and all of humanity. There have been great floods of people who have come here to see the shroud, all in need of God and his mercy. Ours is not just a simple observation of the cynic of the shroud, but it is allowing ourselves to be seen of the face of God with us and eyes closed of a dead man. But curiously, he looks at us and speaks to us in silence and helps us to understand the great suffering that he had to suffer because of our sins and to liberate ourselves from sin and death. How is this possible? How is it that the faithful wish to gaze and look at this man who has been crucified? Because we look to Jesus Christ who died and rose again and whose image is impressed on the shroud, speaks to our hearts and helps us to go up the mountain of Calvary. His gaze sees not only our eyes but our hearts. This disfigured face reminds us and looks like so many of the faces of our sick brothers and sisters especially those who are most alone and least cared for, and also the victims of war 
and violence of slavery and persecution. The face in the shroud also communicates great peace, and this tortured body speaks of majesty and also communicates an energy, a very powerful energy that says, trust and do not lose hope. The force of the love of God and the power of the risen one is victorious over everything and death. The shroud invites us to welcome this announcement, its proclamation. The gospels speak to us of the women that go to the tomb, bringing with them perfumed oils and spices for his burial. Gestures of affection and piety that became a prophecy of life and victory. The body of the Lord is perfumed and then spread across the wood of the cross and into the hearts of his disciples. With the cross, you break the barriers of death. Son of God, have mercy on us, omnipotent and eternal God, from which all the universe receives energy, existence, and life. We come to you to invoke your mercy because today we are still experiencing the fragility of the human condition and the experience of this viral pandemic. It is you who we believe will guide the history of men and your love can change our destiny for the better, whatever our human condition may be. For you, we entrust to you the sick and their families that the paschal mystery of your son may give them salvation and relief. It is your love that does not abandon. We entrust all of the dead of these days and in every nation in the world and for each member of society to carry on his role reinforcing the spirit of mutual solidarity to support the doctors and the healthcare workers, the educators and the social workers in the fulfillment of their service. You who are comfort in the struggles, keep every evil away from us. Liberate us from this epidemic that is hitting us so that we may be serene again in our usual occupations and praise and thank you with renewed hearts. In you we trust, and to you we raise our supplication through Christ our Lord, amen. The blessing of the Lord be always with you and accompany us in the expectation of celebrating the joy of the resurrection of the Lord, amen. <laughs>